good evening everyone my name is Chris Cooper known as the channel guy trader and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading's Miami office down in sunny South Florida today's date is Wednesday August the 21st 2013 and here is today's after the bell market summary video brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com just a quick reminder before we get into the analysis here if you guys have not been to the website yet go check it out websites WallStreetTrading.com if you have not visited our online active trading room that is open that opens up at 8 30 or so in the morning um, you could go to mywallstreettv.com and the password to log in is smart s m a r t and you will be greeted by other traders and myself around 8 30 so check it out a lot of great stuff today we had a great trade in lows and it worked out pretty well all right so let's take a look at the market here the dow was down 105 the nasdaq was down close to 14 and the s p 500 was down nine and a half we take a look at the breadth on the market we had we had uh, 1,600 issues advancing, and we had 4,592 issues declining. So pretty much close to a 4 to 1 basis there in favor of the bears. So the market continues to get the selling pressure. We did have uh, some sideways slow action on the market, on the open, for the, you know, of course, before 2 o'clock. Today was a FOMC minutes day, so everything was pretty quiet in the morning session. And then around 2 o'clock, things got whippy. We sold off a little bit initially, then we rallied all the way up. A lot of the indices made new highs and we closed right dead on the low. So that is definitely bearish activity and most likely we may be looking forward for some follow through um, tomorrow during tomorrow's session there. So let's go ahead and break down the charts guys. Got a lot of stuff to cover here. We want to go to the indices and everything first and then we'll take a look at some individual stocks. So make sure you tune into the video. If you like the analysis that you see here, make sure you share the videos with your trading friends, your different websites that you may uh, be on or whatever the case may be. We would definitely appreciate that. Aside from that, let's go ahead and get this thing started here. Uh, starting off with the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF closed down a dollar, a little over half a percent. You can see we closed at 164.56. And like I was explaining explaining in yesterday's video, the same way that we had this nice, so we're not not even nice, I would say, but we had this same uh, this kind of grind, choppy move higher. There's really no support in this area. Area. I mean, you really don't see any type of congestion that could act as support. If price was to come down for a back test of a breakout or that would act to support anything like that, we're not seeing that because this whole move up happened pretty choppy and uh, you know in a, in a, in a uh, non-convincing manner. So therefore, the market could easily come right back down fluidly, the same way it went up uh, fluidly here. All right, something like uh, this. <laughs> but uh, so as far as some levels goes to watch here below, again we do have the 100-day simple and exponential moving average right here at 163.12. That may uh, be a target for tomorrow for us if we gap down to that level they may buy it right there at the same time a good level to watch is going to be coming in here, here around 162 that comes from this little gap down opening price there prior resistance finally broke so that's going to be a decent support level to buy if we were to continue selling off as then we would be a little bit more extended from the highs that we made up here at 171 to that 162 level but uh, the trigger for tomorrow would be if we break below today's lows around 164.20 look for them to give us some more selling pressure if we can get back above 164.75 165 and hold we can get it maybe move back towards the top of this little range and start to trade in the little range here with some support in this area so we'll have to wait and see how that plays out um the es all right continues to sell after the closing uh, price here we closed and uh the market just continues to sell here and uh, the es is even breaking below some key levels here next level that you have to watch on the es i would say is going to be around this um, one uh, around the 1610 level all right this was a little range that we had here we held support we broke we got back above it so now it's support so 160 1610 will be a, a, a good level to watch if we continue selling at the same time on the es daily chart which is what the instrument that we use to track our stocks intraday in a chat room uh, 1630 is going to be a, a little short term level as that's where the 100 day simple and exponential moving average are located at take a look at the Nasdaq starting off with the triple Q's I also want to take a look here at my proprietary channel analysis on the on the Nasdaq futures but start off with this first the Nasdaq as you guys remember 75 was a key level back here remember we were chopping around 75 before we finally broke above it so on a retest at 75 would be a good level to watch if we break below 75 and hold below 75 look for them to try to bring us back down here towards 7421 which is also going to line up which is also going to line up with these uh rising 50-day moving averages right here on the daily chart now, if we take a look at the Nasdaq futures, if you guys recall, a couple months ago, you know, I told you guys to buy the Nasdaq because we were setting up for a buy signal in my proprietary channel analysis on my channel system here, and that was definitely a good call because, as you can see, 
out of that little range that I had highlighted before. Um, we broke out. We rallied up. We got rejected. There's another key trend line I have right here. We rallied back down. Got a nice little bounce at the bottom of the channel. Rallied back up, and we could not break above this key level. We failed here, and now we look like the, now it looks like we want to uh, go lower. On the end, on the NQ, if we break below 3050, look for a trade back down here towards I would say 3022, 3025 or so. But the Nasdaq channels are looking pretty decent, and if you look at this at, at an angle, if I also turn this screen a little bit sideways here, um, well, turn this channel sideways instead of at this little slightly uh, this little slanted slope here. It would look more like this, and the price action inside will look more like a uh, kind of like this, right? Like a little double top with a failed breakout. So that's what I'm seeing right now. If we break below this little key trail on that active support right here on, on my channel system, I'm going to be expecting the price to continue moving down towards, I would say, 3,005 or 3,015 on the NQ future. So I'm keeping a close eye on this right here as it is respecting some of my channel analysis that I see here. Um, the IWM, the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 has been showing some relative strength the past couple of days, or at least yesterday, showed a little bit of strength, relative strength again this morning. But of course, it closed dead on the lows. It flashed above yesterday's highs and it closed right uh, dead near the lows there, or close to yesterday's lows. Um, key level we have to watch on the IWM is going to be right here around uh, 99.50 prior resistance. Broke out, so now it's active support. This is going to be a good reference level to work off of. Also lines up with this rising trend line and this uh, rising 108 moving average, simple and exponential on the daily chart here. So keep an eye on this 99 level, 99.50 area if we continue to sell. And the Russell, if we break back above, I would say 103, then that would be a little bit more to the point where I would be a little bit more neutral to bullish. But right now I'm kind of neutral uh, to bearish until we get back above 103 on the Russell 2000, which is this nice support level that broke right there. All right, let's take a look at that VIX because the VIX is getting back above 16. Actually, traded above 16 today, pulled back a little bit, closed at 15.94, but uh, it's back. Tr it's trying to get back inside this little little yellow uh, supply zone that I have. And why do I have it as supply? Because check out all the price action that has been uh, trading in this little range here since back here in uh, October. We have this action right here. We have some more action right here. We had a little fake breakout that did not hold. Some more action right here. Some more action right here that broke above 16, but it couldn't hold. We had some more action right here that broke above 16. Trade up to 22 that could not hold, went back below 16. So 16 is definitely a nice reference level to work off on the VIX. If we break and hold above 16 on the VIX, you could expect this thing to start trading back up towards 17, 18, 19. Now, one thing that I see on the ES is the fact is that this ES can actually sell off towards uh, all the way back down. Believe it or not, towards uh, 1610. If we break 1610, it could go all the way back down towards 16 towards a 1560. I mean, this is like a little rounding top right here that broke back below this key 1650 support level. So it's getting a little bit interesting now, and uh, I'm not seeing that many dip buys in the market anymore. Let's take a look at the commodities. The commodities were weak today. Gold did get a nice little pop when the FOMC minutes came out, and it's uh, holding above this key 130 area, I would say. So keep an eye on gold. If it breaks over, I would say 134 or 133 or so, better yet 133.50 from this little high that it made last Friday. Since it's trading this range off this expansion bar, kind of like a little bull flag here, um, this thing could get going to back to the top side towards 137.44. Silver had a nice little pop today. Um, SLV, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Um, SLV, oh, it's up here trying to hold support around 22. If we break back below 22, look for some gap and back and fill action but I am still looking for silver to pull back a bit and make a little higher pivot low off these little off this little powerful move here somewhere uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of uh, hold on one second all right guys sorry about that excuse me here so um so silver I'm looking for that to pull back let's go ahead and take a look at crude oil via the USO and not the crude oil futures we we'll, we'll got to take a look at crude oil futures on both of them uh, USO is trading in a range between 38.50 and 36.50. Keep an eye on if it comes back down here towards 36.50. See if it holds. We are still moving off this nice little move up sideways action. So this is still indicative of a, uh, a possible move higher. So keep an eye on crude oil. Uh, if you take a look at crude oil futures, let's take a look to see what that's trading at. 103.85 a barrel right now, and that's of course obviously looks the same, closely similar, resembles the uh, USO. This one's this one's trading in a range. Between uh, 108 
and uh, 10250 or so off this little up moves. So keep an eye on this range. Um, let's go ahead and talk about some stocks now. We did see some standout stocks today. Visa was up close to 3%, 2.98%. Right, has a nice little bar here. Pulled off a little bit off the highs, but still had a nice little bar. Um, lows. Now, this is kind of ugly because lows broke out to new all-time highs and then pulled back in off this little inverted hammer or um, yeah, inverted hammer, I would call it. You know, some of you guys may have other names for it, but who cares about the name? Just know that it's bearish. We did a nice little break out over this level, and we rallied up, and we closed, I would say, in the lower 90% or at least lower 80% of this price action. Look for this stock to maybe try to rally up a bit. Then when it fails, when it fails to rally intraday, tomorrow look to try to get short that off some type of little pivot high or some lower pivot high or something because this may want to um, fill this gap here because this is a powerful little reversal right here from his ass, from that action. Um, let's t take a look see what Home Depot did, which is its competitor. Um, you know, of course they do a lot of uh, they sell a lot of uh, home improvement stuff or housing products. Building products, I should say, and even Home Depot looks weak here. Home Depot pulls back down towards 72.35. We have to see how it acts around that level. Um, I posted some news on the Facebook page regarding the FOMC minutes. I have not looked into the detail what they had to say, but what I do see um, from what they said was let's bring it up here real quick. Let's see here. One second, guys. So FOMC minutes broad support for Bernanke's tapering timeline mixed on bond purchases. Few official, a few officials, I guess, wants to be it says few official wants to be patient before final decision on bond buys. So I mean, um, that's that's what they're uh, saying there, and um, I guess that caused the market to shake up. I mean, the ES rallied. The ES when that news came out, the ES hit a low of 1636, rallied all the way up to 1654, and then rallied all the way back down to closing lows, and it's currently trading 1635. So that type of action in the last two hours of the day is not bullish, folks. So we got to make sure we have some shorts on the radar for tomorrow, and maybe have some stocks that may sell off tomorrow, and then if they sell off another day and tomorrow, they'll be coming into some decent support levels. So I'll be doing some research on those type of setups and stocks tonight. Um, but overall, the you know the market was pretty bearish. I mean, financials. We're down today after having a little bounce yesterday. The sector has been weak, so they just probably got some little BS bounce, for lack of a better word. And then today they had some more fall to the sell side as people were able to short those stocks at that from the bounce levels that they made yesterday. Um, Apple was let's go and take a look at Apple. Apple was up a quarter percent. Of course, obviously that's nothing. Apple had a nothing day. Uh, let's see here. And of course, Apple looks like it may pull back a little bit. I would not be a buyer of Apple at 510 after a rally in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 weeks all the way from 390. I would wait for this thing at least to pull back or get some type of retracement. A good, a good level to buy Apple would be down here at 470 from a little break, this little consolidation range it had right here for like a back test or something. Um, but Apple, Amazon, we can take a look at Amazon. Amazon has not been able to catch a bid. Well, actually, it's been catching a bid lately. And it's, kind of, it's been trying to catch a bit in this little area in front of this resistance around 281, which would act as support. So they may try to do a little flash down on Amazon, but then tomorrow, if Amazon was to sell off and you were to see that it forms some type of little hammer on the 15 or the 30 or the hourly candlestick, try to see if you can maybe pick that up for reversal and see if this thing can try to close back up. So keep an eye on Amazon. This area is getting pretty close to the little area where you maybe where you could look to buy a little bit. All right, because this was a little range that we had right here before it broke out. So in this little whole little area, could be a possible, uh, it's like a little demand zone, but no telling if it's going to be demand zone at the top of the range, in here at the very bottom of the range for a little shakeout and then move back up. All right. Uh, what else are we looking at here? Uh, WDC was a standout stock today for the data storage stocks for technology. Um, keep an eye on this one. All right. Just keep an eye on WDC. Had a nice little, had a nice little update today. It's trying to break back inside this little channel had this little key support trend line right here you can see what's moving around there moving around there so keep an eye on WDC tomorrow you can also watch STX which is in the same sector in the same industry STX EMC SNDK NTAP all those stocks are involved with data storage STX is in front of uh, on top of support around 38 trading 39.51 SNDK, I think this one was weak today. I got a little bounce today, but nothing crazy there. Charlie still needs to do some recovery. 
SNDK, then you have NTAP. We can take a look at this one real quick here as well. see here. That's yeah, so a tab. Um, some decent action in some of the biotech stocks today. Biotech was a decent sector that was near the top of the list. We changed from open most of the day. And you can see this one. GILD looks pretty interesting. Keep an eye on this one tomorrow. I like it if it breaks over today's uh, today's highs. Actually, I'm setting my alert right now for it. But uh, that's about it, folks. Very uh, bearish day, if you ask me. We'll have to see how tomorrow, uh, how we trade tomorrow. And I hope you guys had a great day. Again, if you have not been to the website yet, check it out. If you're interested in taking our active trading course, contact me at ccooperwallstreettrading.com. If you're interested in joining our prop firm um, to get licensed or trading futures, you may contact me as well as I am well connected and I can definitely have you set up where you can start your professional trading career, folks. Take care. Have a great day. Cheers.